Good day, everyone. I am Professor Rosella Moore Indong. Everyone calls me Mom Ross, and I will be the one helping you through the whole topic of photosynthesis. Okay, so for this particular topic, what we're going to learn are the following. I will give you an overview of photosynthesis in itself, mainly focusing on which part of the green leaf photosynthesis is actually happening, in which specific tissue, in which specific um, organelles within the cell, and uh, in what particular part of the organelle uh, photosynthesis is taking place. So most of the discussion that we're going to do will focus on green plants, even if the fact that any organism that has chlorophyll and antenna pigments can undergo photosynthesis, okay? But to make everything simpler, we will simply focus on green plants when it comes to the parts and when it comes to most of the discussion. Aside from the overview of photosynthesis, I will also enlighten you on the two reactions that are involved in photosynthesis, that being the light reaction, right, where conversion of solar energy into a chemical energy is happening, and the reaction where Calvin cycle is involved. This reaction is actually uh, mostly termed in many references as the light independent reaction or the carbon assimilation phase. Nevertheless, despite the differences in terms, the Calvin cycle is always involved in this reaction. Therefore, we will just focus for now on the Calvin cycle itself. Okay. And with this, you guys will be um, reminded or we will basically review what you already know about photosynthesis when you were in high school. And of course, add a few more knowledge such that uh, any knowledge that you have on photosynthesis will be extended. Okay. So any phototropic uh, or photoautotropic organism or phototrophs as we call them, utilizes um, energy, right? But you can see in this definition that phototrophs or those autotrophs that utilizes light so that they can um, produce a source of energy, okay? So mainly they use solar energy, right? This is because the main source of light energy for photoautotrophs or phototrophs is actually the sun. But do not get the whole idea wrong because despite the fact that the sun is the main source of light energy, any artificial source of light can actually be a source of energy for all phototrophs. So if you are trying to do an experiment on phototrophs and, photo and uh, photosynthesis, you can, of course, do it inside a dark room and just use balls or fluorescent lamp, and that would be your source of light. It doesn't always have to be, uh, the sun doesn't always have to be the source of light energy. But in most definition of photosynthesis, you will notice that solar is being used because in the environment, this is the natural source of light energy. Okay. So it is not wrong. It is just that it is not the only source of light energy. Let us please take note of that. Now, as you can see in this particular slide, solar energy says here is actually being harvested and it is being conserved. So solar energy or the light energy from the sun is being harvested by phototrophs and converted into a reduced form of energy, right? Or what we call conserved energy, okay? Conserved form of energy. So when you see the term reduced form of energy, that simply means the energy is conserved, okay? And this reduced form of energy is normally found in the form of sugar. Right? This sugar can be in the form of glucose or higher forms of sugar, especially in plants like sucrose. Okay. Now, notice that uh, below, oh, sorry. Right? Notice that below we have phototrophs classified into two different classifications, wherein we have anoxygenic, okay, anoxygenic and oxygenic phototrophs. Now, anoxygenic phototrophs are those photo phototrophs that can undergo photosynthesis even without the presence of oxygen, right? So instead of utilizing water where oxygen is found, they utilize hydrogen sulfide instead, okay? So these are precursors 
that are required or materials that are required for photosynthesis to occur. Okay, so photosynthesis can is not only oxygenic, it is also possible that there are uh, organisms like, for example, the purple and green bacteria that does, does photosynthesis without utilizing oxygen. Okay, they are simply using a different material than that of uh, organisms undergoing oxygenic um, photosynthesis. Okay, so moving on, photosynthesis in plants, since I told you earlier that we will focus more in green plants, okay, photosynthesis in plants occurs in the chloroplast. Okay, so photosynthesis can be summarized using the following equation. Okay, where this is where you utilize carbon dioxide and where you produce the reduced form of sugar. In this particular equation, we have glucose. Okay, so this is glucose. This is your reduced form of energy. Okay, so this reduced form of energy, pardon my writing, right? This reduced form of energy is the conserved form of energy. The conserved form of energy can actually be found in the bonds that hold the molecules together. Okay? For those naman that undergoes an oxygenic photosynthesis, you can also form the same molecule, which is also, of course, a reduced form of energy. Siyempre, the material carbon dioxide is needed because you are trying to form a molecule that has carbon. Okay, moving on. All right, so photosynthesis and cellular respiration are complementary processes. So eventually, after this particular lecture, you will be introduced to cellular respiration, where instead of the chloroplast, the mitochondria is the one that is involved. No? So in cellular respiration, instead of producing a reduced form of carbon or reduced form of energy, they utilize this reduced carbon or reduced form of energy. So in photosynthesis, what we produce is a reduced form of energy. In cellular respiration, you actually utilize this reduced form of energy so that you can produce ATP, which is the, the energy that is most utilized by the cell. Okay, so this is why photosynthesis and cellular respiration are actually complementary processes. One produces the conserved form of energy, the other one utilizes this conserved form of energy and actually transform it into energy that is utilizable by the cell. Okay. So, as an overview, I told you earlier, we are going to introduce you to which part of the leaves, no? Um, literally, you can find a photosynthesis happening. So, in this particular, oh, sorry. In this particular, sorry. In this particular slide, right? I'm trying to zoom it in, but I keep pinching it out, right? In this particular slide, notice that we took a piece of the leaf and literally um, zoom it in. So this is a microscopic view of the leaf cross section. So here you will notice that we zoomed in once again on a particular cell. This is a palisade cell, which will be uh, familiar with pagdating sa inyong laboratory. So in this palisade cell, no, here we can see that, uh, sorry, that the mesophyll cell rather. So this is the palisade cell. This is the mesophyll cell. So in the mesophyll cell, you will notice that there are circular, right? Um, parts that can be found inside this cell. So itong mga circular structures na to are actually the chloroplast. If you zoom into the chloroplast, you will notice that it has two membranes. No, So dalawang membrane layer. And then there's a third membrane system inside it which we call the thylakoid. Okay, so let us expound on that. 
Okay. So photosynthesis, as I mentioned earlier, occurs in plant uh, in the chloroplast in plant cells. So the chloroplast, as I mentioned earlier, consists of an envelope of two membranes. Okay. Wherein one encloses the inner compartment filled with thick fluid, and this is what we call the stroma. The stroma is basically the space inside the chloroplast. The stroma is where you can find the third membrane system, which we call the thylakoid membrane. So if we are going to go back to sa ating illustration earlier, this is the outer membrane, this one is the inner membrane, and the inner membrane is protecting this space, right? This space inside, which we call the stroma. And inside this space is the third membrane system you can see as these green structures. And this is what we call the thylakoid membrane. Now, the thing about the thylakoid membrane is there are two different types of thylakoid membrane. Okay, the one that you see as disc-like structures are called the grana. Okay, so if it is stuck, you call it grana. If you see one disc, you call it granum. Okay, so grana is basically the plural form. This is when you see it, the discs in stuck. Right, each disc, of course, in singular form is called the granum. Okay, so the granum. Right. Forgive my writing. Let's try to, oh, sorry, elaborate on that again. Okay. So the grana is plural. Okay. So if it is singular, you call it granum. Yeah. All right. So um, the thylakoid, as is written here, have an internal compartment called the thylakoid space. If you remember dun sa ating picture kanina, you will notice here, dito sa loob ng mga disc-like structures na to, that there are spaces. Now, those spaces literally act like the intermembrane space of the mitochondrion, right? Ma ma -e elucidate kayo dito pagdating natin dun sa discussion ng ATP formation. Because the ATP formation, right, sa photosynthesis is very much like the electron transport system happening inside the mitochondria during cellular respiration. Okay. So, thylakoid membranes also house much of the machinery that converts light energy into chemical energy. This means you will see a lot of proteins embedded in the thylakoid membrane. And these proteins are involved in the whole electron transport system that is involved in photosynthesis or what we call the photosynthetic electron transport system or photophosphorylation, which are terms that, are, that you will see later. Okay. So the chlorophyll molecule, of course, is also found in the thylakoid. Okay? They are built into the thylakoid membrane, and they are the ones that help capture light energy. All right. So in photosynthesis, the light energy is captured by chlorophyll molecules to help boost energy of electrons so that these electrons get excited and an excited electron should always come back to its stable or yung kanyang uh, equilibrium state, right? So, hindi pwedeng laging nasa higher or excited state si electron kasi it can cause um, spontaneous combustion because an excited electron means it is carrying a lot of energy, no? So, kinakapture ng photosynthesis yung light so that an electron can be excited and one way of actually making this electron go back to its uh, its normal state, right, less excited state, is if you pass the electron from one machinery to the other, and as you do that, you can actually form ATP. Okay? So in photosynthesis, light energy is converted into chemical energy. And this chemical energy is then stored in chemical bonds of sugar. Okay? 
So, sa buong photosynthetic process, ang gusto kong ma-imagine nyo, paano i-convert si light energy into chemical energy? This will be in the form of ATP and NADPH. So, yung chem chemical energy natin would be ATP and NADPH. While, yung ating chemical energy na yan, kapag na-store na siya, in the chemical bonds of the sugar, yung sugar na napo-form natin is of course eventually will be in the form of glucose. Pero sa actual na Calvin cycle, ang ipo-form muna natin ay yung material required for the formation of glucose. And this material is known as G3P or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, also known as triose phosphate. We will go there, no? Pagdating natin sa part na yan. Okay, so three important things. Harvesting of light, no, uh, light energy rather, harvesting of light energy and converting it into chemical energy, which is in the form of ATP and NADPH. And N ATP and NADPH, or the chemical energy, is converted into a stored form of energy, which is also called the reduced form of energy, which is also called the conserved form of energy. No, this conserved or reduced or stored form of energy can be found in the chemical bond, okay, in the chemical bonds of the sugar that we will produce in the second phase of photosynthesis. Okay. So the overview of this two, two of the two stages of photosynthesis are linked by ATP and NADPH. So ito dito nyo maintindihan kung bakit mayroong formation muna ng ATP and NADPH, right? And then Paano siya i-utilize no? uh, second phase, which is, which is uh, where Calvin cycle is involved. Okay. So, photosynthesis occurs in two metabolic stages, as I uh, emphasized a while ago. So, you have here um, the light reaction, right? So, the light reaction occurs in the thylakoid membrane. Okay. Later on, magkakaroon tayong mga pictures that will emphasize on this. For now, I want you to follow. Okay, so it occurs in the thylakoid membrane. In this particular process, water is split. The splitting of water is what we call hydrolysis. Okay, sorry about the writing. Okay, so hydrolysis. Hydroly hydro hydrolysis or hydrolysis in some references right is the process of splitting of water during photosynthesis okay so this is where um water is split into two molecules of hydrogen oxygen and then two electrons right so there is where you actually get your electron para magkaroon ng reduction or oxidation reduction reaction okay so uh, the light reaction provides the source of electron right in the light reaction, rather, water that is being split provides the source of electron, giving up oxygen as a byproduct. So I will give emphasis on that later, pag nandun na tayo sa figure where this is being discussed. So ATP is generated, okay? ATP is generated from ADP and, of course, a free phosphate group. We'll also enlighten you on that later. And the transfer of electron and proton from water to the electron acceptor NADP plus is where NADPH is produced. So, sa light reaction phase pala, dun nang yayari yung light harvesting that converts the light energy into ATP and NADPH, which are chemical uh, form of energy. Okay? So, yun yung light reaction. All right. Now, the second stage is where the Calvin cycle occurs, right? So, um, Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast, okay? So, you will see here in the stroma of the chloroplast. Uh, once again, sorry, once again, light reaction occurs in the thylakoid membrane. Calvin cycle will occur in the stroma of the chloroplast. Why here? It is because it is in the stroma of the chloroplast that you will see the enzyme rubisco. The enzyme rubisco is the one needed to facilitate 
the metabolic activity involved in Calvin cycle. Without the Rubisco, Calvin cycle will not take place. And it is only in the stroma of the chloroplast that you will find this particular enzyme. Therefore, Calvin cycle will always occur only in the stroma of the chloroplast. Okay, now the Calvin cycle is a cyclic series of reaction, as is written here, that assembles sugar molecule using carbon dioxide. So this is where we start the formation of the conserved form of energy using the process known as carbon fixation, right? As we do that, the ATP and the NADPH that was produced in the first stage or the light reaction will be utilized, okay? So just so we have an idea, this is the chloroplast. This would be, uh, so this is the chloroplast. This is the outer membrane. This is the inner membrane. This is the stroma. The space that you can see is the stroma. This disc stuff would be a grana. Each of this disc is called a granum. No? So this is granum, granum, granum. So this is also a membrane. This is the third membrane system that we call it. And this is where, in the membrane is where the light reaction happens. Okay. So in the membrane, there are proteins that houses chlorophyll, and this facilitates harvesting of light energy. With the help of that light energy, water okay, is split. So hydrolysis will take place. Hydrolysis. Then what happens next is formation of ATP and NADPH. How? Right? You remember with one ADP plus a phosphate molecule, you can produce ATP, and that is facilitated during the whole light reaction phase. How that's going to happen? We will um, discuss that further in a bit. And then NADPH, right? NADPH with the help of photolysis will then be reduced right, into NADPH. So, magkakaroon siya ng dalawang electrons. Right? Magkakaroon siya ng dalawang electrons and that electron will come from water. And when the water was split, you notice oxygen was formed. Okay? So, this is the light reaction phase. Now, the whole Calvin cycle, right, that is happening in the stroma, as was written, stated earlier, rather, the whole Calvin cycle will utilize this time ATP and NADPH, forming sugar. Okay? The initial sugar that is formed by Calvin cycle, as I mentioned earlier, will be in the form of glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, or G3C. Okay? So as it utilizes ATP, it is broken down into molecules of ADP and the phosphate, and NADPH is oxidized. Therefore, it is converted back into its NADP plus in a form. Okay? So this is the overview of photosynthesis. But of course, we're going to discuss everything in detail. Okay. Now, the overall reaction in photosynthesis will always look like this, right? It will always require a minimum of six carbon dioxide so that you can form this particular sugar. As I mentioned earlier, this is glucose. Glucose consists of six carbon molecules. Therefore, you need six carbon dioxide as the initial material to be able to form a glucose. Okay. So two components no, of the reactions of photosynthesis would be the light-dependent reaction, which literally requires light to happen. So this is when light energy is required so that chemical energy is formed, right? And the second component of the overall reaction of photosynthesis is a light-independent reaction, which takes place without light directly, However, of course, the light-dependent reaction is required because the chemical energy that is produced during the light reaction are the 
uh, initial materials or precursors that are used to be able to produce the chemical energy during light independent reaction. Okay, so it is independent in the sense that um, light is indirectly needed, but it doesn't mean that it can take place totally without light because without light, the chemical energy will not be produced. Okay, so moving on, we now discuss in detail the whole light reaction, right? So sorry about that. So the light reaction, right, is where and we uh, specified this earlier, the light reaction is where light energy is harvested and converted into chemical energy. Okay, so, bago natin maintindihan yung process na yun, we have to try to understand light first. Somehow, right, not in details, because this you will uh, encounter in your Physics 100, hopefully, and will be discussed somehow in details in your higher botany, specifically in botany 120, which is plant physiology. Okay, so sunlight, as the main source of energy in our environment, contains energy which we call electromagnetic energy or electromagnetic radiation. Once again, do not get it wrong, any source of visible light right, contains energy that is called electromagnetic energy or electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so visible light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The full range of the electromagnetic wavelength is actually very wide. So later on, we have a picture of electromagnetic spectrum. And you will notice that it involves not just the visible light, but mainly it has UV, it has radio waves, no? it has um, X-ray. right? So these are involved. And maliit na part niya lang talaga yung um, visible light spectrum na tinatawag natin. Pag sinabi yung visible light spectrum, it is the one... No, that provides us visibility or yung nakikita ng eyes natin. So if you went into a dark area, suddenly there's light, literally you are seeing light or you are seeing everything because there's light. So it's like that. So electromagnetic energy literally travels in waves. No? And the wavelength of an electromagnetic uh, energy is the distance between the crest of two adjacent waves. So Paano yun? Paano natin yun maiintindihan? So later on, meron tayong photo to give us an idea of that. Okay. So visible radiation okay, can also um, behave as a photon. So ang light kasi, no, it behaves or it has two um, attributes na tinatawag natin. Light can behave as a wavelength or as a photon. So pag trinay mo siyang i-envision, ang photon kasi ay parang maliliit na particle. So if light behaves as a wavelength, so it you have to envision it moving like this. So from above, kaya lagi ang drawing natin ng light, di ba? Parang pag ganon. Kasi wavelength siya. If it is photon, ang i-envision mo parang uh, droplet, no? So magkakaibang molecule, malilit na molecule. So it's a small packet, no? Of energy. So light can behave both as a wavelength and as a photon all at the same time. It depends sa uh, kung anong klaseng uh, discussion yung kailangan mo. Nevertheless, light as a photon and a wavelength both has well, both will always show the same amount of energy. Okay, so if uh, whether it's a wavelength or a photon, parehong amount lang ng energy yung may kita mo sa light. It's just that it has or it behaves in these two different types of attributes. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, meron tayong um, electromagnetic spectrum of light and this is it no so ito yung electromagnetic spectrum of light natin so you can see gamma rays x rays uv infrared microwave and radio waves in between uv and infrared is where you can see a very 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 small part here at kapag pinalaki natin siya ng konti you will notice that there is our visible light spectrum now the visible light spectrum as you can see ranges from 380 to 750 where you can see yung ating rojiv no or pabalik that, Roy Jibib. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, indigo, violet. Okay? So you have these wavelengths, right? 380, 400, 500, 600, 700, 750. Big sabihin yung mga light na yan, kung ano yung nakalagay dyan, kung saan sila nakarange, yun yung kanilang wavelength. Ano yung wavelength? Sabi kanina, the wavelength, for example, a 650 nanometer wavelength, is described as the distance between two crests. Ano ba yung crest? 
ang wave, it goes up and it goes down. Itong higher no, na part ng wave, ang tawag natin dito ay crest. Right? Itong lower na part ng wave, ang tawag natin dito, oh sorry, mapangit yung sulat, ang tawag natin dyan ay trough. Okay? So the distance between two crests, yun yung wavelength natin. Okay? Gandun mo makukuha or mamemeasure yung wavelength ng isang light. So for example, the light that belongs in this area has a wavelength of 650 nanometer because the crest shows 650 nanometer na distance from each other. Okay, so that is how you describe wave. Photon naman is described as just, you know, singular packets of molecules and then it contains energy as packets of molecules. Okay. Now, um, with the whole process of photosynthesis, plant pigments are actually required because, sorry, this particular um, light energy no, will only be absorbed by plants that can absorb at particular wavelengths of light. Okay, so let us expound on that. There are plant pigments found inside the leaves of plants, right? Mostly you can find this in the chloroplast if it is a chlorophyll, no, if it's chlorophyll. And uh, some carotenoid pigments are also found in um, inside the, the chloroplast, right? So you will find this inside the plant cell. So these plant pigments absorb wavelengths of light and reflect, binabalik, or in emit, no? Or transmit other wavelengths. Now, yung colors na hindi inaabsorb ng isang plant pigment, normally, ibinabalik niya uh, to the environment. And these colors are the ones that we see. For example, chlorophyll doesn't absorb green wavelength. No, it doesn't. So since it doesn't absorb green wavelength, it transmits the wavelength back to the environment. And this is the reason why the pigments that we see sa ating mga uh, plant leaves are green. Because these are the ones that are being transmitted back to the environment by chlorophyll. Dahil hindi nila ito inaabsorb. Okay? So that's a, a few uh, things that you should know about plant pigments. Whatever it is that they don't absorb, they transmit. And the colors that you see in the environment is literally the colors that they do not uh, absorb. No? So that they are transmitting. Okay, so speaking of um, wavelengths that they absorb, different chlorophylls and different carotenoid pigments absorb different wavelengths of light, therefore different colors of the light spectrum. Okay, so chloroplast, right, contains several different pigments. We have chloroplast A, chloroplast B. We actually have chloroplast C and D, but chloroplast C and D are not uh, very much um, main factors or main players in photosynthesis. So we will always focus on chloroplast A and B and carotenoids or yung tinatawag natin na antenna pigment. So later on, you will see that term. Okay? So chlorophyll A absorbs light with a wavelength of 430 nanometer around the blue area and 662 nanometers around the red area. So ito yung wavelength, no? Nakita nyo Kanina, dun sa ating electromagnetic spectrum, yung color, right? And yung kanilang corresponding wavelength. So, 380, right? Is around the violet area and then 750 is, of course, at the red area. So, 430 ito. So, if it is 400, sorry, 430, it is around this area. So, nandun siya sa blue, no? Na visible light spectrum. And of course, anything beyond 650 is already around the red um, visible light spectrum. So 662 is actually at the red visible light spectrum. A chlorophyll B, on the other hand, absorbs 453 nanometer of light that is also under the blue wavelength. And then 642 nanometer, which is around the orange or um, in between the orange red. Okay. Carotenoids absorb light maximally between 460 nanometer and 550. 
Okay, so uh, as is mentioned, um, carotenoid basically broadens the spectrum of colors that can drive photosynthesis and provide photoprotection absorbing dissipating excessive light energy. For now, I just want you to take note of this. This will be discussed in detail for the thing you say in your higher botany. Okay. So in this particular slide, what I want to show you naman is the absorption spectrum. Iba yung absorption spectrum dun sa visible light spectrum. Visible light spectrum is showing us the different wavelengths of light. Absorption spectrum is showing us the different wavelengths that are absorbed by the different um, plant pigments. So dito makikita nyo si chlorophyll A, yung peak ng absorption niya is around 400 plus. So that is 430, approximate natin dahil nabasa natin kanina. So it is around the blue light spectrum. So naa-absorb ni chlorophyll A, yung peak ng absorption niya is around this area. However, there is also this small peak in kapag gumagawa kayo ng experiment no, tungkol sa photosynthesis, mahalaga yung mga small peaks. But yung characterization ng absorption ng chlorophyll A peaks are at around the 430 nanometer wavelength and that is why yun yung naging characteristic um, absorption um, capacity niya. Okay? Now here we have chlorophyll B and yung peak niya halos hindi na natin makita is um, around 480, no? So this is 400, that's 500. So nandito siya sa may gawing gitna, still at the blue area. Okay? Carotenoid, however, has a peak around the green area. Wala siyang peak around the red area. But you will notice that chlorophyll A, aside from absorbing in this area, meron pa siyang lower peak. Sorry. Uh, sundan natin. Sorry, lower peak over here. This is the lower peak doon sa chlorophyll A, doon sa red area. And this is the lower peak for chlorophyll B in the red area. So meron siyang dalawang higher peak of absorption around the red area. Okay, so absorption spectrum once again shows you kung saan or anong wavelength ng visible light nagkakaroon ng absorption yung ating um, plant pigment. Okay. Moving on, with the thylakoid membrane, chlorophyll and other pigment molecule na absorb ngayon ng plant cell yung light energy. And then this light energy, kapag na-absorb ng isang plant pigment, it is then transferred to the next plant pigment hanggang sa makarating siya dun sa area which we call the reaction center, which you will see later pag diniscuss natin yan pag meron ng figure. Okay? So in the thylakoid membrane, chlorophyll molecules, notice, are organized along with other pigments and other proteins into a complex of proteins known as the photosystem. Okay, so what are photosystems? In essence, this is how a photosystem looks like. Para mas madali natin siyang intindihin. Okay, so this is the thylakoid membrane. Right? Notice, no? The hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tail, hydrophobic tail, hydrophilic head. So, ito yung uh, lipid bilayer. Right? So, alam natin kung ano nagkakonsist dyan, no? Hindi yan, phospholipid. Those are uh, glycosylglycerides. In any case, so this is the membrane. Latent. This is the membrane. This is the thylakoid membrane. Anong sabi natin? Light reaction will always happen in the thylakoid membrane. That is because... The whole light reaction phase requires proteins that are embedded in the membrane, right? And one of those proteins is a complex of proteins, which we call the photosystem. The photosystem has different parts, no? Three main parts of the photosystem would be the light harvesting complex or yung antenna complex, as we call it, okay? Antenna complex, right? So the antenna complex or the light harvesting complex, isa lang yan, is a series of pigments. So it's like an antenna of pigments. So sila ay connected, not connected physically, but connected in terms of function of absorbing the light. 
These are responsible for absorption of light initially and then passing on the energy from that light energy that was absorbed into a pair of chlorophyll A, okay? A pair of chlorophyll A, which will always be the last acceptor of light energy before, no, before uh, reduction of electron happens and the electron, right, as you can see here, is excited, so it moves to a higher state, okay? So kapag na-excite yung electron na yan, another part of the photosystem would be your primary electron acceptor, which literally accepts this electron that was excited. Okay? So ulitin natin para hindi magulo. Photosystem contains light harvesting complex. Yung light harvesting complex consists of the chlorophylls and of course the carotenoid. Primary electron acceptor, that what it does is it, it accepts the electron. So, paulit-ulit ko itong i-discuss kasi ang daming figure na kasunod after nito. And the last would be the reaction center complex where the initial um, chemical, uh, chemical reaction, photochemical reaction will actually take place. Okay. So, this is just another way of showing you how the antenna complex, ito pala, you have it here, how the antenna complex or the antenna pigment pass on the energy from light into the electron acceptor. Okay? So, paano napapass ang energy ng light? Energy of light, no, harvested by one of the antenna pigments can be passed on to the next antenna pigment, to the next, to the next, to the neighboring antenna pigment until it reaches a chlorophyll A. Tatandaan nyo, laging huling taga-accept ay chlorophyll A, right? Until it reaches a chlorophyll A in the reaction center. Yan, you see, reaction center chlorophyll. So that is always chlorophyll A, okay? This passing of electron is done through what we call the resonance transfer. Resonance transfer is like transfer of, um, uh, it, it's a uh, transfer through vibration. Parang yung sound. Yan. The transfer of sound is also called a resonance transfer. So, diba, imagine you when you have, um, when you have a tuning fork, no? When you have a tuning fork, one tuning fork, kapag um, siya ay, uh, if you hit the tuning fork to a solid object, it then starts to vibrate with each other. So it forms a sound, no? There's a sound. Tapos, yung isang tuning fork, even if it is not vibrating, dahil siya ay nasa rest mode, kapag yung nagbabibrate na tuning fork ay inilapit mo, no? Sa isa pang tuning fork, the other tuning fork will start to vibrate as well, forming a sound, okay? And that is because the sound can be transferred through what we call the resonance transfer of energy. And that is also how photon energy or light energy is transferred from one antenna complex to the next. No? So yung transfer na yan happens until the light energy passes, right? Passes this energy to the reaction center. And in the reaction center is where the first redox reaction will happen. Ito yung tinatawag natin na photochemical reaction. Okay? So, dito nangyayari yung photochemical reaction. Okay? So, the photochemical reaction, which is literally a redox reaction, right? Or um, uh, uh, oxidation reduction reaction. So, basically, what happens here is na-re-reduce, -re rather, na-re-reduce yung electron mo Okay, an electron will be reduced. Bakit? Kasi may mataas na mataas na energy na galing sa light. I-absorb mo yun yung electron, magiging highly reduced yung electron mo. So, mapupunta siya sa higher state. Pag napunta siya sa higher state, kailangan mo siyang i-transfer. Kasi yung energy na yun, kailangan ma-release. And as electron is being transferred for, from one protein complex to another, nare-release dahan-dahan yung energy na daladala niya. Okay? So you have to imagine this uh, reaction center ay nawalan ng isang highly reduced na electron. Therefore, the reaction center becomes highly 
oxidize. Okay? So, para mas maintindihan natin, alright, um, we have um, this later on for you to be able to understand that. So, ulitin ko ulit yun somehow para ma-capture natin. Right. So, bago yun, dahil na-introduce tayo sa idea ng photosystem, right? And pinakita ko sa inyo yung itsura ng photosystem para madali natin siyang ma-imagine, right? And how um, inside the photosystem, the, this, this whole... Um, this whole transfer of light energy takes place at nagkakaroon tayo ng photochemical reaction. Okay, it is imperative na makilala natin yung mga photosystems that are actually involved in the whole process of photosynthesis. Okay, so there are two types of photosystem. We have photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. And they cooperate with one another in the sense that Photosystem 2 actually provides for the electron that is required in photosystem 1 that you will see later on. Okay, for now, describe muna natin kung ano yung difference nila. So, photosystem 2 is called P680. Okay? P680. Because the pigment it's, it absorbs is in the wavelength of visible light around the 680 nanometer. So, ang tawag natin sa PS1, no, PS1, ang tawag sa kanya, ang tawag natin sa um, reaction center ng PS1 ay P680. While ang tawag natin sa, ah, sorry, PS2, sorry. Ang tawag natin sa reaction center ng photosystem 2 ay P680, while that of uh, photosystem 1 Okay, ang tawag natin is, is a P700 dahil yung kanyang wavelength, it absorbs 700 nanometer na wavelength of light. Okay, so in the light reaction, light energy is transformed, medyo pa ulit-ulit na tayo dito ha, is transformed into chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. To accomplish this, electrons are actually removed from water, okay? And then passed on to photosystem 2, to photosystem 1, and then accepted by NADPH. And since this is an electron, therefore your NADPH is reduced into NADPH. Remember, Leo Ger, diba? Loss electron oxidized, gain electron reduced. NADP gains an electron during this transfer of electron from water. Okay, actually, mama mahita nyo, of course, it will start from P680 or photosystem 2, right? And then, into um, NADPH. Pero syempre, kailangan mo ng source of, of uh, electron para palitan yung nawalang electron sa P680. And there is where uh, water will enter the whole picture. Ayan. So hopefully, hindi kayo nagugulo kasi wala pa tayong um, illustration. Later on, ulitin ko ulit siya. Okay. So between the two photosystems, the electron moves down an electron transport chain. So parang cellular respiration, no? Merong electron transport chain tulad ng sa mitochondria. Except ang tawag natin sa electron transport chain for photosynthesis is photosynthetic electron transport system or PET. Diba? Sa mitochondria, you simply call it EPS, right? Electron transport system. Sa photosynthesis, we call it PETS, Photosynthetic Electron Transport System. Okay? And so this movement down the electron transport chain provides energy for the synthesis of ATP. So lahat na yan ay makikita nyo dito sa following illustrations. So kanina dinescribe na natin yung photosystem 2 and then dinescribe natin yung photosystem 1. Okay? So photosystem 2 and then photosystem 1, pareho silang may antenna complex, my reaction center, at my primary electron acceptor. Okay? This is photosystem 1, antenna complex, reaction center, and then primary electron acceptor. Okay? So, ang nangyayari doon sa light energy, light will be absorbed by the antenna complex transferred from one antenna complex to the next to the form of resonance transfer until it reaches the chlorophyll A that is found in the reaction center. Okay? So, itong reaction center, okay? Reaction center. Okay? This reaction center in, rather, in this reaction center, 
the electron, right, in this reaction center that receives this energy from light then becomes highly excited. So it enters a more unstable, highly excited state. Okay? And when an electron enters a highly excited state, it has to come down no? to its normal or more equilibrated state. Okay? So this high, uh, this, this electron no? that has very high energy will go to a higher state and that part siya ay matransfer from one um, uh, complex to another para bumaba yung kanyang energy. Okay? So, para mangyari yon, kailangan may mag-accept muna dun sa highly unstable uh, with a very high energy in highly excited na electron. So, ulitin natin, light was absorbed by the antenna complexes this light energy was passed through, uh, was passed on rather from one antenna pigment to the next until it reaches the chlorophyll A of P680, which is your reaction center. In the reaction center, the whole photochemical reaction or redox reaction happens. An, an electron became, becomes excited and so it uh, moves to a higher state. So kailangan siyang i-transfer. Therefore, an initial primary electron acceptor, right, will accept that highly excited electron. And since P680 loses an electron, P680 then becomes highly oxidized, no? So P680 becomes highly oxidized because this electron, right, moves out of it. At anong nangyari? This electron then is accepted by the primary electron acceptor and this becomes reduced. Now, the, high, the highly oxidized form of P680 will then drive the whole splitting of water. Okay? Dahil si P680 ay naging highly oxidized dahil dun sa taas ng energy ng electron na nawala sa kanya, photolysis will now take place. Why? Because photolysis no, will be the one providing the electron required by the highly oxidized P680 para maging reduced siya ulit. Because oxidized P680 is not the normal state of a P680. So kailangan magkaroon ulit siya ng electron. Okay, so ano yung nagda-drive? Ulitin natin sa photolysis. What drives photolysis or the splitting of water into oxygen, proton, and of course, an available electron para ma-absorb ni P680 is the highly oxidized state of P680 that was brought about by the movement of the electron no, into a higher state. Okay? So, nabalansin na natin si P680 by taking an electron from water. Kaya ang sabi natin kanina, kung mapapansin nyo, to accomplish this, ano, anong this? To accomplish the formation of ATP and NADPH, electrons are removed from water. Okay? Hindi ito yung umpisa. Hindi ito yung umpisa nung light reaction. Pero, it is an imperative state because uh, highly, um, um, a highly oxidized P680 is uh, not the normal state of a P680. So, it is important to actually split water or remove electron from water by splitting it into molecules of uh, proton, oxygen, and electron para maibalik natin yung natural state ng P680. Okay. So, dahil na, natapos na yun, no? So, naging stable na si P680. Pero, at this point, mayroon namang highly reduced primary electron acceptor. Mataas pa din yung energy ng electron na nasa kanya. So, what happens is, an electron transport chain will now take place. So later on, makikita niyo yung details ng mga um, proteins that are involved in this. For now, what you have to see first is the transfer 
of the electron from a protein to the next protein complex to the next protein complex until this time P700 requires the electron. No? So, hindi agad yan ipapas kung hindi naman oxidize si P700. Kailan naman na-oxidize si P700? Just like P680, uh, P700 is found in a photosystem and it has the antenna complex too. So, the antenna complex, the antenna pigments in the complex will of course absorb light and then it will pass on the energy of light at, up until it reaches the chlorophyll A of P700. The electron in P700 receiving a high energy of light, just like that of the electron in P680, will now become excited and will move into a higher state, therefore oxidizing P700. So dahil oxidize siya, kailangan niya ngayon ng replacement electron. Saan manggagaling yun? Doon sa electron na nawala kay P680. Through transfer, from one complex, uh, protein complex to another hanggang makarating siya kay P700. Okay? And then, dahil stable na ulit si P700 after that particular oxidation, this primary electron acceptor naman that is also involved in, um, in um, photosystem 1 will capture the electron and will transfer it right to Ferredoxin, or later on, we will give it the, that name dun sa mga susunod na slide, right? And then this protein complex will then transfer that electron to NADPH, forming N, ah, sorry, to NADP plus, forming NADPH in the process. Okay? So, anong gusto nating makita ulit sa light reaction phase? Gusto natin makita paano nakakaform ng NADPH at paano nakakaform ng ATP. Okay? So, NADPH is formed through that passing on of electrons through a redox reaction no, method by passing electrons from one photosystem to the next. And ATP is produced because of osmosis. Okay? Chemiosmosis requires another um, protein complex in the form of ATP synthase. Okay? Um, all right. So normally, ATP synthase can be found also embedded in the membrane. And this is where proton will move no? from the thylakoid uh, space palabas ng stroma. Okay? We will discuss that in, in a bit. Okay? So... Um, what I want you to see here, naman, right, is um, well, are are uh, a few parts that is not seen dun sa other figure. And here you will notice photosystem regains electron by splitting water, leaving O2 or oxygen gas as a byproduct. So ito yon, no? So hindi siya masyadong maliwanag kanina. So ito yon. So basically, pareho lang siya ng dini describe. Hindi lang natin nakikita yung membrane dito sa particular picture na ito. This is what we call the Z scheme of photosynthesis. Okay? Oh, sorry. Ayan. Now, in the next part, right, what we're going to see naman are the, um, sorry, I have to charge my laptop. Okay? So, in the next part, what you're going to see naman um, are the different um, protein complexes that are involved in the whole electron transport system. Okay, so here you will see, okay, sorry about that. Here you will see, okay, the presence of plastokinone, phaeophytin, and the, and sorry, and AO. So this is P680, naalala ninyo, ito yung reaction center. So the uh, initial or the first electron acceptor of photosystem 2 is actually called phaeophytin. Okay, wala siya dyan, no? So, feo fighting. Feo, oh, sorry. Okay. Feo fighting. Okay. So, feo fighting. 
Yan yung primary electron acceptor ng photosystem 1. The primary electron acceptor of photosystem 2 naman is called AO. So, photosystem 1, photosystem 2. Reaction center is called P680 for photosystem 1. Reaction center is called P700 for, photo, uh, for, sorry. for photosystem 2. It's P680 for photosystem 1. It's P700. Theophytin as the primary electron acceptor of photosystem 1. And AO as the primary electron acceptor of photo Sorry, of photosystem 1, AO is the primary electron acceptor of photosystem 2, it's theophytin. And then, yung series of proteins that are required for the transfer of electron would be plus tokenone, the cytochrome BF complex, and then plus tocyanin. Okay, para makarating yung electron from uh, P680, papunta kay P700. So the transfer of electron goes this way. P680, right? Or yung, yung um, the action center complex. So light energy through the antenna complex to P680. Ito pinakita lang yung higher state ng electron ng P680. Right? From the reaction center, the highly, right? Kapag may asterisk yung electron, it means higher state. The high state of this electron makes it highly excited. So the highly excited electron is passed on to pheophytin, which is re then reduced. And then pheophytin will reduce plus tokenone. There are two types of plus tokenone. Never mind that. So ikagawin lang muna natin siyang isa. Pheophytin reduces plus tokenone, meaning it passes on the electron to plus tokenone. From plus tokenone, electron is passed on to cytochrome BF complex. And then cytochrome BF complex passes it to plastocyanin. As this happens, nagkakaroon tayo ng movement of proton. No? From one side, or from the uh, stroma into the, uh, inter, um, into the lumen space ng thylakoid. Okay? So nagkakaroon tayo ng proton gradient or increase, sorry, increase in H+. Plus. Right? Increase in H plus or proton gradient. Okay, and then, pag naipas nyo kay plastocyanin yung electron, one, yung light energy reduces P700, plastocyanin will then reduce P700. Then, the high state, the uh, excited electron will be accepted by AO. There are different types of A's. No? So, AO, right? Lang muna yung... Uh, Ide discuss natin. And then, um, to peridoxine, right? And then into peridoxine NADP oxidoreductase. This is the final enzyme that accepts the electron for photosystem 1. And from here, this particular enzyme then reduces NADP plus into NADPH. So, ganun tayo nagkakaroon ng reduction ng NADP plus into NADPH through transfer of electrons. Ito yung tinatawag natin na photosynthetic electron transfer and this is basically what happens during light reaction stage. No? So light reaction, it is about um, exciting an electron by harvesting the energy of light and then uh, using this electron, passing this electron from one protein to the next para makaproduce ka ng uh, chemi uh, osmosis, right, that then um, creates ATP and then it creates NADPH. Okay. So, the products of light reaction will be NADPH, ATP, and oxygen. Ulitin lang, no? Baka kasi mamaya sabihin nyo, ma'am, nakita ko kung saan na-form yung NADPH. Eh, saan na-form yung, yung ATP? So, as you remember, mayroon tayong electron transport chain. So, Kung maaalala ninyo, from the discussion of um, the processes happening in the mitochondria, when there is an electron transport chain, there is what we call chemiosmosis. Kapag mayroong chemiosmosis, anong nangyayari? Mayroon kang differences in gradient. No? So nagkakaroon ka ng differences in gradient. So saan naiipon 
Uh, anong gradient rather? Anong gradient yung magkaiba? Since this is chemiosmosis, it is literally osmosis, movement or passing ng molecule through a membrane. Ang nagpa-pass through is not water, so it's not merely osmosis, it's, a, it's chemiosmosis, so it is a molecule, a different type of molecule, not water. So in this particular chemiosmotic process, ano yung natatransfer? Sorry, ang natatransfer ay proton. Nagkakaroon ka ng differences in proton gradient from one region to the next. And with the help of that ATPase, no? ATPase. ATPase is um is the enzyme that is responsible in formation of ATP. So ano mangyayari? Meron tong differences in gradient. Anong rule natin pag magkaiba yung gradient? Pag magkaiba yung gradient where there is higher gradient magkakaroon ng movement to a region with lower gradient. So if there is higher gradient of protons in this area, they will pass through the ATPase para makalabas sila para magkaroon tayo ng equilibrium of proton no? in this area which is the stroma, in this area which is the thylakoid space. And as this proton moves through the ATPase which is a protein, no? It drives the ATPase to move, and as ATPase moves, it then produces ATP. At ganun nagkakaroon ng formation ng ATP. So pag, pag inaisip nyo, so man, parang basically halos, halos pareho siya sa um, uh, cellular respiration. Yes, halos pareho siya. Ang magkaiba lang, of course, is the area where it's taking place and the, in, the, the number of involved proteins that can actually generate proton in the process. Kasi dito sa um, photosynthesis dalawa lang yung panggagalingan no yung water na na split in the thylakoid space at saka itong plastokinon so this is the PQ na nakita nyo kanina hindi ko muna yung i-discuss in detail kasi this will be discussed in detail pagdating nyo sa higher pota ninyo for now what I want you to understand is there is an electron transport system it also creates no it creates um proton gradient, okay? Once proton gradient is created, chemiosmosis follows. No? There's a difference in gradient, therefore molecules molecules have to move. Okay? Molecules have to move. And since there is a membrane between these two regions, and this is osmosis, right? There's a membrane, you have these protons dahil charged sila, kailangan nila magpass through a channel and that channel is another protein in the form of ATPase that actually produces ATP. Okay, so that's how ATP is produced with the light reaction phase. Okay, so na-check na natin yan. Na-check na natin to and nakita din natin kung saan ito galing which is in the splitting of water. So these three are the products of light reaction. These three will then be um, uh, oxygen will of course be emitted and then NADPH and ATP will then be utilized for the next um, uh, process which will be your um, Calvin cycle. Okay. Okay. So, as was um, said earlier, chemiosmosis happens and this involves ion moving down their concentration gradient and their electrochemical gradient. So that is how ATP is generated. That is simply what this slide is telling us. Okay, so what you saw earlier, dun sa pag-produce natin ng ATP by harvesting light energy, ang tawag natin dun sa process, metabolic process na yan, ay photophosphorylation. Okay, so photophosphorylation is the process of producing ATP right or a phosphorylated form of ATP using the initial energy input from light. Yun lang yung gusto sabi niya. Now, photophosphorylation has two different types. You have the non-cyclic and the cyclic photophosphorylation. Yung diniscuss ko sa inyo kanina kung saan uh, thylakoid membrane or the thylakoid uh, membrane is involved. Halimbawa ito. So, ito yung thylakoid membrane na nakita natin kanina. So, ito yung ating PS2. Yan yung plastokinone. This is the cytochrome BF complex. That's the plastocyanin 
Then this is PS1 dot peridoxine and then uh, peridoxine uh, NADP reductase and then napuform mo yung NADPH. Now, as I mentioned earlier, nagkakaroon tayo ng magkaibang concentration gradient of proton. No, kung saan mas mataas ang proton gradient, habang nangyayari yung passing ng electron, tumataas yung proton gradient sa loob ng thylakoid space. So, kailangang mag-move niyan palabas dahil magkaiba na yung gradient in the thylakoid space and in the stroma. So, pag mataas na yung gradient in the thylakoid space in comparison to the stroma, magkakaroon ka ng chemi-osmotic movement of protons and this will pass through an ATP synthase. Yan yung sinasabi ko kaninang ATPase. An ATP synthase. And as they pass through, as they pass through, they form ATP. So, ganun na form yung ATP at NADPH. Doon sa non-cyclic flow of electron or yung pinakita ko sa inyong process kanina. Non-cyclic form of uh, electron flow or non-cyclic form of photophosphorylation can be found in higher forms of organisms. So higher forms ng plants actually uh, has non-cyclic uh, non electron flow. The cyclic electron flow can be found in lower forms of plants or, or uh, sa mga bacteria mostly. Ito yung makikita. Now sa cyclic electron flow, I'm sorry, um, hindi kasale ang photosystem 2. Walang photosystem 2. Rather, ang nagmumove lang is yung photosystem 1. And from the photosystem 1 P700 reaction center, pag na-receive ng primary electron acceptor, no, ipapadala niya sa peridoxine. But this peridoxine, instead of sending it, sending the electron to NADP plus uh, peridoxine reductase, this peridoxine will instead send the electron to the cytochrome complex, then the plastocyanin. Therefore, the plastocyanin can in turn once again reduce the P700. Itong part na ito at saka itong part na ito na nakita natin kanina sa cyclic electron flow are non-functional pagdat sa, pagdating sa cyclic electron flow. No? Doon sa non-cyclic kasama ito, sa cyclic hindi kasali mga yan. So umiikot lang yung electron in this uh, complexes. Kaya siya tinawag na cyclic electron flow. Okay. So here written are the, the, the differences between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. And yeah, just read through that. Okay. So... <clears throat> How is uh, pho photophosphorylation different from oxidative phosphorylation? So obviously, mitochondria right, is actually utilized for oxidative phosphorylation while chloroplast is used for photophosphorylation. And of course, um, yun yung main difference nila. Right? And photophosphorylation utilizes light energy, of course, um, uh, to be able to form um, ATP. Okay? So, dahil nakaproduce na tayo ng ATP and NADPH, the next thing that will happen naman is the, the second phase ng photosynthesis, which is a little bit shorter in comparison to the discussion na meron tayo kanina, right? So, this, uh, this is running for an hour, a few hours already, right? This is a bit um, shorter, pero medyo tricky to understand. But, you know, we'll try to get you there. Okay. So, meron na tayong NADPH, tapos meron na tayong ATP. So, the next thing that we do is we want to reduce carbon dioxide to form a sugar para makonserve natin yung energy na nanggaling sa light. Na this time ay na-transfer na natin sa ATP at saka sa NADPH. Okay. So, the reducing form of energy from ATP and NADPH will then be utilized to produce sugar. No? So sugar is the stored form of energy in plants, right? So to produce sugar, the necessary ingredients are atmospheric carbon dioxide and the ATP and NADPH that we were able to produce earlier during the light reaction phase, okay? So the whole calving cycle is needed for the formation of sugar to be able to reduce a carbon dioxide into a three carbon sugar, which sugar, sorry, 
which we call glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, as I said earlier, or G3P. So the plant may then use G3P to make glucose and other organic molecules like sucrose, uh, galactose, fructose, uh, and so on. Okay. So in the whole process, Calvin cycle is required. Anong mga material, materials or precursors needed? So we need um, carbon dioxide that is available in the atmosphere. And then we also need ATP that was formed earlier during the uh, light reaction phase. And then NADPH. All these will uh, uh, are required no, in the whole Calvin cycle where an output will be a sugar in the form of G3P. And then the rest of the molecules that are not utilized for G3P will be used to uh, complete the cycle once again. So may regeneration phase kayong makikita. So speaking of uh, phases or steps, these are the steps that are required for your Calvin cycle. Number one, carbon fixation. Okay, then reduction in with the help of NADPH, right? And then of course, um, ATP, dahil sila yung may daladala ng electron. Uh, sorry, NADPH, yeah, dahil siya yung may dala ng electron. And then the release of G3P, that is the output. And then of course, the generation of the initial molecule where your carbon will be fixed. And that molecule is known as RUBP or yung mas mahabang version nito ay ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate. Okay. So that's RUBP. Kaya RUBP yung tawag sa kanya because it's ribulose, right? That's where RU comes from. And then this Phosphate. So ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate or RUBP is the initial molecule where your carbon dioxide will be fixed. Okay, so this first part shows carbon fixation. So notice that in the whole reaction, hindi tayo start with just one carbon dioxide. We actually have to start with three. Okay. Uh, later on, you will understand why. So for now, we explain ko muna yung process and then mamaya babalikan natin yung numbers. No? Kasi medyo mahalaga siya para maintindihan nyo kung paano ka naka-form ng molecule that can be removed from a cycle and still regenerate RUBP in the process. So what you will see here okay, for the carbon fixation phase is carbon being fixed the RUBP or cerebulose 1,5 bisphosphate. That is with the help of the enzyme Rubisco, right? Rubisco, this, the name of this enzyme, yung kanyang longer name is ribulose from RUBP, no? Ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate carboxylase. So it is capable of carboxylation or carbon fixation slash oxygenase. So mayroon siyang bipolar oxygenase. Mayroon siyang bipolar function. It can act as carbon fixing or oxygen fixing enzyme. Okay? So Rubisco, isin muna natin para hindi masyadong magulo. Okay. So Rubisco, in a sense, right, Rubisco basically is the enzyme that is required for fixing carbon, this carbon, right, Litin natin, no? for fixing this carbon, i sorry, okay, into this carbon molecule. So papansin niyo five carbon molecule yan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 1 carbon, magkaka-form ka ngayon ng 6 carbon molecule. However, the 6 carbon molecule that is formed from the carboxylation or carbon fixation of this carbon dioxide and RUBP, yung na-form yun na 6 carbon molecule is highly unstable. And what happens immediately is right after it is formed, it is cleaved into two 
three carbon molecule in the form of three PGA or three phosphoglyceric acid. Okay, so three phosphoglyceric acid or three phosphoglyceraldehyde, right, is now the first stable product of Calvin cycle. Okay, so this is the first stable product. So, yun. Kaya makikita nyo, bakit ganun po? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus 1 carbon. This should be 6 carbon. No. This is 6 because the 6 carbon that is formed from the addition or carboxylation of carbon dioxide into RUPP is an unstable 6 carbon molecule. So, nakleave off agad siya. Kaya mayroon tayong 2, 3 PGAs. No? 6 pa din yung carbon kasi times 2 yung 3 PGA mo. That's carbon fixation. And tapos na yung usapan nung first step doon. The second step is reduction. Dito na natin gagamitin si ATP and si NADPH na uh, na-produce natin from the uh, initial reaction which is the light reaction phase. So here, 3 PGA will then be reduced no? utilizing ATP. And then, the product of that reduction will be once again, oh sorry, phosphorylated rather, no? Phosphorylated rather um, uh, with the help of ATP and then reduce, right? Yung um, intermediate na ito, I will not go into that, so we will discuss that in higher bo uh, botany. Then the, the intermediate of 3PGA will then be reduced by NADPH forming glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Okay? So dito nangyari yung reduction phase. In short, 3PGA will be reduced until glyceraldehyde phosphate is formed. Yun na yun. So sa carbon fixation, inad natin si carbon dioxide to RUBP forming a 6-carbon molecule Sorry, that is highly unstable. So the 6-carbon molecule is then cleaved into two 3-carbon molecules in the form of 3PGA. Each 3PGA will then undergo a series of reduction with the help of ATP and then NADPH. And this 3PGA will then form your G3P. Okay? So the G3P, after the formation of G3P, mayroon tayong release of one. Notice this you will release one G3P molecule. Okay? One G3P molecule. Okay. So, anong sabi dito? Paano kang makakakuha ng one? Mayroon kang six, remember? Mayroon kang six na na-form na G3P. Ma'am, paano ako nagkaroon ng six na G3P? Alright. Mamaya natin pupuntahan yung numbers. Pero, ang tatandaan nyo muna, you will release one. Right? From that 6G3P, you will release 1, magkakaroon ka ngayon ng 5. No? Na natitirang G3P. Yung 5 na natitirang G3P, gagamitin natin para sa next part, which is the regeneration of RUBP. Okay? So, kanina gumamit tayo ng ATP. May natitira pa tayong ATP by numerical computation dun sa ating... Um, Light reaction, hindi na natin yung binigyan ng emphasis that will be discussed in your higher botany. Okay, so this G3P will undergo, right, a series of process until makaform ka ulit ng RUBP. Medyo mahaba itong process na to, no? I will uh, show you that pag naging studyante ko kayo sa botany 120. For now, this is all you have to understand. Okay? And so, those G3Ps na natira, na hindi natin ni-release kanina, will be the ones that we are using para sa regeneration ng RUBP. Okay. So, kung naguluhan, balikan natin ulit siya. Kanina, sabi natin carbon... Oh. What happened? Sorry. Okay, are we still recording? Sorry about that. Okay. Ito natin siya ulit. Ayan. Alright. So, kanina sabi natin, let's see, 
Yan. Kanina ang sabi natin, meron tayong carbon dioxide, di fix natin sa RUBP para maintindihan natin yung numeration or yung numbers. So, kailangan mo ng tatlong carbon dioxide to complete the calving cycle. If you are going to need three carbon dioxide, kailangan mo ng tatlong RUBP. Therefore, three. There. Okay? So, this two will form a six carbon molecule. Six carbon molecule na magsisplit into two. Right? So, meron kang um, isang RUBP, isang carbon. Pag pinagsama mo sila, magkakaroon ka ng six carbon molecule. Ang gagamitin mo, tatlong carbon dioxide, therefore you need three RUBPs. So, makakaform ka ng tatlong six carbon molecule na masisplit into two. Therefore, makakaform ka ng anim na three carbon molecule. Okay, I hope na gets nyo. Ulitin, 3 carbon dioxide plus 3 RUBP will form 3 6 carbon molecule that splits into 2. Okay? 3 carbon molecule that splits in 3 6 carbon molecule that splits into 2 therefore gives you 6, no? 6 3 carbon molecule. Okay? After ng reduction phase, mag makaka this Sorry, after the reduction phase, makakaform ka ngayon ng 6-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And the 6-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, isa dun sa anim ay i-re-release natin para makaproduce tayo ng carb uh, other forms of reduced carbon in the form of sugar. And then, okay, and then, Yung natitirang lima, gagamitin natin para makaform ka ngayon ulit ng RUBP. Okay, so ang ginamit nating RUBP, yung initial na ginamit natin, tatlo. Therefore, yung kailangan natin i-regenerate, tatlo din. Okay, pero what I want you to remember is RUBP is a 5-carbon molecule. Kung gagawa ka ng 5-carbon molecule out of 3-carbon molecules, Ilang 3 carbon molecule ang kailangan mo to generate 3 5 carbon molecule. Oh, so simple math lang yun. 5 carbon molecule, tatlong car 5 carbon molecule will require 15 carbon. Diba? If you want, ulitin ko, if you want to regenerate 3 5 carbon molecules, kailangan mo ng 15 carbon. Kasi sa isang 5 carbon molecule, may 5 carbon ka times 3. So you have, you need 15 carbon molecule. And, if you have G3P, ilang carbons lang mayroon sa isang G3P? 3 carbons lang. So para makaproduce ka ng 15 carbon molecule that you need to regenerate RUBP, you need 5 G3Ps. And that is how you can actually get a G3P that is removable from the cycle and still complete the cycle at the same time. So, ito yung buong process ng Calvin cycle. Okay? And with that, we are done with our lecture on photosynthesis. So, I know this is a very long lecture. Uh, I hope you guys understand this uh, very complex process. This is actually a very elementary way of discussing the process, but um, I hope you understand. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, ask any of your professors um, for any clarification regarding the matter. Yeah, so I hope this will prepare you for the upcoming um, chapter quiz along with the discussion on cellular respiration. Okay, so with that, I thank you for watching this video lecture.